welcome to Face the Facts. Good to see you all here once again. It's been a while. Uh, we've been very, very tired and very busy lately, but I think it was time for us to get together and to get going with talking about everything happening right now because it's a whirlwind right now. You have pretty much every team has something that, that needs to be discussed or followed. I think we all know right, right now, center stage is the Boston Bruins. Um, sorry, Phil. But we'll get into the Celtics, too, because I have an axe to grind with you-know-who. So we'll get into that, too. But uh, first of all, just how is everybody doing? Uh, hang in there. If you, could, you could hear my screaming kid. He's doing all right. Oh. Everything's okay. Tom, all, right. all good on your front? Yeah. Excellent. My front? Well, you know, that's how the story goes. Um I want to start with the Bruins because I'm very pumped up about this team right now. Um, not to throw Tom under the bus, but I was the one that picked five games. He was the one that picked six listen, games. So listen, that is listen. one check mark for me. And listen. You. Oh, well, listen. and I said, a, I said a gentleman sweep. Can we, can we call it what it oh, is? Oh, there was nothing gentleman about that series at all. That was no. a mud bath. Yeah. That was yeah. a hatred batch. I didn't no, realize I mean, how much I... I despise the, the Washington Capitals. I didn't realize how much I did, but I do. Oh well, you're late to the you're late to the club. I was then. late to the party for some reason. Um, but no, I only I only said that I only said that they weren't going to win in five because statistically, the the Capitals should have won game game five. Statistically, they should have won game two as well. When you think about it. Got lucky uh, because um, I think it was Craig Anderson at the time fell asleep. That was the double overtime win. Game two, yeah, game, game two was two. Craig, Craig Anderson Ander fell asleep. Yeah, uh, the first game their first goalie got hurt. The second game Craig Anderson played, and then they that's had, right. Yeah, he did uh, start. Samson yeah. off in in, uh, in that for the rest of the time. It was a little bit more of an upgrade, but still, he had his moments. He well, had his sleepy moments. Game game three, he made the one mistake that you, you should never make as a goalie in an overtime game. Is you don't play the puck. You don't play the puck behind the net in overtime, no matter what. I get a little overtime. nervous sometimes with Tuca when he sometimes goes and does the same thing. But he, he doesn't make me as nervous as Halak does. I feel a sense of calm. I do want to talk about the goalie situation right now. I feel a sense of calm right now with, with Tuca. Yeah, he's um, – I mean, if you've been watching the games, you can tell that he is definitely feeling confident. Uh, he's very – he's playing, um, a, you know, a great – he's playing great position-wise. Um, he's made – you know – He's only he hasn't had too many bad rebounds. He hasn't given up too many rebounds, too many good uh, good rebounds, and that's helped the young defense in front of him out a lot. And the defense in front of him has been playing outstanding, really. I don't think Tuka's had to been the star of the show, and I think that's a big kind of burden off of his chest a little bit, at least for that first round. I will say his best game was. I, think, I would probably say it was game five because he was the one that pretty much kind of kept the Bruins in that game because I thought the Bruins were kind of sleepy. Uh, in, they in got outshot a bunch. They got um, shot out. He had like 40 something plus saves in that game because the Capitals were playing desperation hockey. So I was very pleased with the whole series in general. I'd say, as a, whole, I'd say as a whole team, their, their best game though, as a whole team was game four. Yes, I would say it was definitely for game four. There's a lot to like right now with this team. You see that second line is just really clicking well with Craig Smith. Taylor Hall had a great series. And then same goes for um, Krejci. Krejci. Krejci had more of the assists. I don't know why I was forgetting Krejci. I think it's because he didn't score anything. But he set up a lot of good plays to, to manufacture some points. The first line, though, from game three to five, just just went crazy, Bill. And you saw Pasta get out of his drought that he was in. 
Uh, Bergeron had two goals in that last game, and Martian, in my eyes, has been the MVP the entire the entire season. So if they're going to show up and they're going to play, and the second line is going to do well, you're really clicking. And when you get production from the third and the fourth, that's just gravy, gravy right on the top. We heard last night because the series ended with the Penguins and the Islanders. It will be the Islanders. So the series will kick off on Saturday night at eight o'clock. I'm the sure. Thing on the Island, Islanders front is uh, the Bruins now have home ice. They have home ice advantage. So that's a big, that, that could be a big factor here, especially with fans being allowed to re-enter into the garden. So it should give us a, a big advantage, I would say, in this upcoming series. The Bruins have played the Islanders a lot in this season so far, and it's one version versus the other version. The first version stunk without Taylor Hall, Curtis Lazon, and Matt Riley, or Mike Riley, excuse me. Version number two with Taylor Hall, with Curtis Lazon, with Riley, they're three and all. That team is what we're going to see in this next series. Do you not agree? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the way they're they're the way they're rolling right now, it's it's really hard to say if there's a team that can actually stand in their way. Really, um, I I will say though, I am kind of surprised that the Penguins lost that series or weren't able to you know win the game last last night. Um, well, you had Puddles McGee in net. But you call those players Sims, folks. Yeah. Sims. Big yeah, time. I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess, I mean, I'd say the Penguin that series was a good series, and the Penguin, Penguins are playing well, I guess, until up up until last night. So, I'm happy the Penguins are out. You would have had, you would not have had home ice advantage, and I can't stress this enough. It's a different environment right now. You have fans that haven't been at games in almost two years. And I'm going to step in and I'm going to say, fans, if you are going to a Bruins game and you do not cheer and scream and holler and yell and do whatever the hell else you need to do as a fan, get out of the park. Get out. That's my stance on it. Yeah. So that should be a huge factor on where this team is going to head in this next round. I have full confidence. I'm going to say it's five games again. I was good with five the last time. I'm saying Bruins in five. I'll give the Islanders a game. But when push comes to shove, the better, more experienced team who's been there, done that, is the Bruins. Here's my biggest thing that if it doesn't go the Bruins' way, in 2015, the Bruins had their, uh, their draft. It was Don Sweeney's first draft as a Bruin GM. We had picks 13, 14, and 15. Pick number 13, uh, it, was, it was DeBrusque in there, Zach Sem 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 Seminole, Sorry, and, and Zaborloff were, uh, were the picks there. Well, Matt uh, Bor Borkowski, is that his name? Borkowski. Uh, Borkowski on the Islanders was pick number 16. It's a major burn there for Mr. Don Sweeney because he passed on that particular player three times, and he is one of the heartbeat players of the Islanders. Barzell. 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 Thank you. That's his name. That was the same draft where you've got uh, uh, Aho in uh, Carolina. You have the goalie from the Capitals who was also drafted down in that first round. Um, it's not Samsonov, it's Sem Sem Seminoff or something like that, right? Samsonov. Samsonov, thank you. Um, and then you have another couple players on the Islanders who were drafted a little bit higher in their round in that 2015 draft. If the Bruins lose this series, it comes down to that draft class for Don Sweet. So you do not want to see Barkowski or, say it again? Barzell. Barzow. Barzow. I keep thinking of, a, remember Matt Barkowski? Yeah. You're brewing. Okay. Uh, it's going to come down to that. So I want to see, I want to see the Bruins really rise above here and prove that maybe they didn't get the better players or the better player, but if they win this series, hopefully it shuts up a lot of people about 
Sweeney's bad draft he had in 2015. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, the coaches. So you have Cassidy, and then you have uh, Barry Trotz, who's one of the best coaches, I would say, in the NHL. He has a lot of experience. He was there for the Washington Capitals Cup, and then the Capitals didn't resign him, which was the stupidest move on their part. And then he went over to the Islanders, and they became a playoff contender. His team is known to be very have a lot of uh they're very good with fundamentals they're very defensive. good with they're, they're very, very defensive. defensively they're very good with staying in games and everything like that so i i don't see this series being like a 5-1 a 6-1 uh anything like that i think it's gonna be close it's gonna be close but i do think uh, the upper end is going to belong to the bruins with the experience the, factor. The, the speed the speed is going to be a factor bruins are quick speed is going to be a factor now, when you match up the Islanders versus the Capitals, they do not have as much star power. The Capitals had more Alex Ovechkins and, and Jerk Wilson. I don't want to ever call him his name, Tom. Um, they had uh, TJ Oshie. More household names that you're probably familiar with. Chara, of course, too, for a name that you might know. This team doesn't have that. I know from past Bruins teams, uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny um, Boychuk. Joy Boychuk is a part of their defensive core over there. But no, I'm pretty sure he retired. Did he retire? I'm pretty sure he retired. Maybe that's the bit. Well, I guess that's a good thing if he did retire because that uh, that wouldn't have been nice to see him go off and, and to win. But um, I'm very optimistic about this upcoming series that's going to go on. It's going to start Saturday night at the Garden. Uh, game will be at eight o'clock, and I hope that that place is rocking because the 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 masks are off as of Saturday for all these restrictions. I think they have to wear them in the garden and stuff, but life will uh, get back to semi normal a little bit more come Saturday. Did you find out the boy check thing? Uh, playing career. November. 25th, he retired because of an eye injury. We was still playing this season, so he must have went on I, uh, IR and then uh, November 25th, 2020. Yeah, so he started the season. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we want to add on to the Bruins front? Uh... Rest of the NHL. Let's take a look at the rest of the NHL. Are there any surprises so far for you outside of obviously Pittsburgh and this Islanders series? But anything else kind of stand out to you with what's going um, on? Yeah, Minnesota being tied with Vegas right now. Is it 3 3? 3 3. My cousin's out in Vegas and she keeps saying that they're kind of nervous with everything right there. For whatever reason, the Wild have had the upper hand against Vegas this season. And I am not as optimistic now on Vegas. I still think Vegas will win, but it, it, okay. just pro it just proves that they have a weakness. Other teams. Remember, we have um, – I'm actually going to take a second here. Um, Phil, is there – I hope hopefully Phil is around here. I think I can share my screen. I want to show everybody the NHL uh, playoff uh, bracket. That's, uh, this bracket. So you can, guys can all get a chance to see and why it's a little confusing. Uh, the biggest reason that I want to pull this up is because you have Toronto and the Canadians facing off in the Western Conference division for whatever reason that they're doing. And it's confusing a lot of people on what, uh, what things look like right now. I think, I think it's right here. Yeah, Montreal and Toronto. You have Winnipeg. They swept in Edmonton. Well, I need to share my screen. Please. I have it right here on my computer. So how Florida and Tampa. Working, Tampa how it's working Florida. is it's Toronto, Montreal, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Carolina, Nashville, Florida, and Tampa. That actually, no, this is not correct. This it is. Florida so beat Tampa. Vegas and Minnesota are in the east are in the eastern bracket conference. Yeah, they are. Wait, I have a I have a sporting news bracket sheet that's up now that's showing it that way. 
No, that one's I wrong. Even, yeah, it's got to be wrong. I think they did it for a space in NHL. NHL.com. Take a look at it. Um, you had Toronto and Montreal, Winnipeg and Edmonton. Um, you had New York and Pittsburgh, Boston and Washington. You had Colorado and St. Louis, Vegas and Minnesota. I was surprised then, the Blues got swept. Uh, I wasn't. I, I had the I had the inside scoop. So what happened with the Blues? Why did they crumble? They were missing. They had a bunch of injuries, um, and they were. I mean, they didn't do well to begin with this season, anyway. So we know Vegas and Minnesota, like we said, are tied three three. They don't play tonight. I think they play tomorrow night. Yeah, they play tomorrow because they played last night. How about Toronto having a three-one lead against the Canadians? Um, I'm kind of surprised by that because Montreal played better this year, but it's also tough because they still don't have fans. And my other question I wanted to ask is, how overrated is Connor McDavid? I don't think he's overrated. I think it doesn't help that. Um. It doesn't help that his, the team that he's on does not play well. I just think it's embarrassing that Winnipeg is able to sweep that team after you have a player of Connor McDavid. I mean, you don't think so? No. They, they, got, they have two star players that carry the team through the regular season. And then I was, I was talking about this with somebody the other day. It, the, the regular season, it doesn't matter who you have. on. I mean, it matters, but it doesn't because you can still have a good team. But the playoff is a completely different animal. You need you need to play a team game. And then going back into the East, you have Carolina and the uh, Predators. Carolina the won. Yeah. And, and Carolina has the three-two series lead on that right and now. Winning. Um, I think Carolina comes out of that. They should. So I think it's going to come down to Carolina and the Lightning. Could this be deja vu and we see the Carolina Hurricanes again in the conference finals? Really? I'd like it because I don't want Tampa. I don't want Tampa. They cheat. They cheat. They, they, they tell people that people are on injured reserve and uh, they're able to cheat the system out there a little bit. I'm nervous on if it's the Bruins and the Lightning. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Uh, yeah. I think it's probably going to come down to that. We have the better goalie. True. There I are... just we just know how the Bruins have been in these situations from before. Let's yeah. say they, they they go and get the Eastern Conference Finals and they're in the Stanley Cup. So you you want Vegas? Do the Bruins beat Vegas? Uh, I think it's more of a possibility now. Now that Vegas can't seem to beat Minnesota because. I know. I think I think you might be looking at. I mean, looking at how the bracket is, could you have Toronto and the Bruins in the Stanley Cup? Theoretically, by looking at this bracket, yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. You could have that. But I also have Winnipeg beating Toronto next round. You do. So maybe this, maybe Winnipeg is the one that the Bruins are going to face. And I, for me. That's kind of like looking back at 2011 with Vancouver. I don't know much about Winnipeg. I'll be honest and upfront, but I'll have to do my research and look at it. Um, it would probably be one of the first championships for Canada in a long time, I think. Right? When was the last? When was the last championship for Canada for uh, for hockey? It was a while. Canadians haven't won in a while. Like, Maple Leafs haven't won since what the 40s or 50s? I think it's like 80 years. Something like that, right? Yeah. And that's supposed to be the hub of hockey, which is crazy. I think this is this has a lot to do right now with the Bruins. The Bruins have, I don't know if they have a lot of pressure to them, but it's kind of nut up or shut up right now. Well, I think, I think, um, I think Cassidy the Bruins are hungry. Needs, I think Cassidy the Bruins are hungry this year. I think Bergeron needs that extra, that extra, you know, ring. Because it's gonna it's gonna cement them more in hockey legacy. I think just because you have one, you're gonna be looked at. Oh, you won one, and then that's it. The one and done. It would be number seven. Could be, could be. 
Um, so that's how hockey is shaping out. Again, Bruins are at 8 o'clock. That will be on Saturday night. I see some uh, zebras in the background there with Phil, and I think it gives us no better pleasure to now turn things over to talk about the Celtics. And I hope that Phil is ready because I, I want to hear what his take is on what Kyrie said the other night. It's still, uh, do, you know, do you know what he said, Tom? Phil, are you ready? I did not hear what he said. All right, there he is. Hey, sorry about that. I'm just dealing with a toddler. So uh, yeah, I want to get into the Celtics. I want to get into how the playoffs and everything are looking. And there's a lot of there's a lot of bad right now, a lot of bad right now happening. And I think it's time to figure out what the next step is here for the Celtics. So I want to go first with Kyrie. So I'm pretty sure that you heard what he had to say yeah, the other night about oh, taking, go ahead, go taking, his, taking himself back to the garden. And he was asked, what's it going to be like playing at the garden and everything? And Kyrie yeah. said, well, I hope it's not a bunch of racist, belligerent crap going on at the garden from stuff. So I take the I take offense to that because I, I know the history of, of, of Boston and everything has it's it's bad history with racism and stuff like that with players and all that jazz. But my biggest issue here with Kyrie is he's trying to distract and put attention on to something else instead of himself. That's what I think is going on. I think Kyrie said what he had to do. First of all, he's lying. Because I don't know if you guys remember back in 2019 when DeMarcus Cousins came to the Garden and somebody shouted some other derogatory term at that certain player. Kyrie came out on, after the game and said that that sort of stuff, he's never heard it here as a player. He's never had to dealt with it with anything. And he thought that that was just one particular fan who had to ruin it for the rest of the rest of the people that were at the Garden. So I'm kind of curious to hear what your take is on the film. Uh, yeah, I mean, for starters, I mean, Kyrie's not going to hear any of the racist stuff anyways, because all the people who can afford those seats, I mean, they're all up in the raft, usually they're up in the rafters. Well, listen, we all know it. And we all know Boston can be perceived. And, and in many cases, it is, you know, there are degrees of racism there. And I, I what well, you're, uh, I'm sure you watch the same Holly and Felger, uh, it's, you know, daily thing I saw yesterday. And yeah. Uh, Kyrie, you know, that when you had DeMarcus, it was like 2000, I think, 19 or, yeah, I think it was 2019, 2019 yep. when Kyrie was still on the team. And, you know, a fan got thrown out for uh, being kind of, bad, yeah. yeah, saying some bad, being unruly, I'm sure. And, you know, ruin it for everyone else. Uh, and Kyrie's like, yeah, like you said, I, I haven't heard anything here. And, you know, I, listen, Kyrie is Kyrie, Kyrie is Kyrie, if that, if that means anything to anyone. Uh, he's going to try to take attention away from certain things. And also he will try to pass the buck once in a while. And regard and regardless of who he is, it doesn't change the fact that what he says isn't necessarily untrue. But I would also add with a caveat, yeah, I would I would say you're probably looking at every almost every uh, some places more than others, but uh, across the states, and this shouldn't make you feel better, but this should just make you be like, oh, okay. It's like not a every Boston arena problem, I would say. It's not just a Boston problem. Uh, it's, it's yeah, everything. but I, I think it is. But I think Boston has that. I think Boston has earned that uh, rep, though, in a lot of ways. Hell, I remember, I remember when I was in high school, and that's not too. We're not talking too long ago. We're talking like 2001, uh, or like 2000, 2001. I remember going to a Red Sox game when John. I'm sorry if the baby's drowning and everything, but uh, I remember when John Rocker. We were facing the Braves and. Around that time, it was when John Rocker was taking heat, or the year after he took heat. I remember that. I remember that player. Yep. Doing that tie ride. Which, to be honest, John Rocker actually didn't say a lot of crazy – I mean, he said some crazy stuff, but he didn't necessarily – it wasn't as bad as you think. But it wasn't good, but it wasn't as bad as uh, it was made out to think. But there were people in front of me and behind me who was like who were cheering on John Rocker because, like, they saw that as a symbol of just kind of like, you know – white greatness i don't know 
or a white uh, a white fighting back or something weird it was just so white weird. entitlement or something yeah and not just white entitlement just like being um like yeah speaking up against the blacks that's kind of like what it, it was so weird and i'm like you know i'm not i'm not from like i grew up in methuen i grew up in a swamp so i know where like all this <laughs> other you know what i mean so i know i've seen swamp it bang. I, well i mean listen man i racism doesn't start and end with boston but but uh that being said it sucks that you know we we have to kind of, we we can talk about this and say like you know that's kind of unfair for him to say but also we have to swallow that bitter pill that there are degrees of that that are earned and we have to just kind of listen but also know like you said no the Kyrie Irving is a special type of personality who just wants to zap what the real issue is from something and just try to you know make it about him and I, listen i love Kyrie Irving in a lot of ways but he also is kind of he can be a real jerk to put it uh norm mcdonald esque um like oh he's a real jerk uh but you know i uh, listen if I, i i i wish he was back here uh i wish he would have listened to brad stevens and i don't uh actually i will not to go on too much of a, a rant but reed i never knew about this but terry rozier spoke out against him Yep. uh went like after the 2019 season when they lost to the bucks in like five games yep and he talked about how Kyrie Irving like they would they would go through practice and go through Brad's system and do it and then when Kyrie's on the floor it'd be something else so i mean listen i i still think he's an an, an incredible player an incredible talent but clearly you know there's something up with that guy in a lot of ways um I sometimes I I like what he has to say about certain things and it's like you know you, you then you think about it like he's, a, he's very toxic at times. Yeah, and it, it sucks cuz he he'll bring up something like this which is a real issue and he'll just it just kind of takes track from the biggest problem. I think that you know that fans aren't mad about this whole matter with with being racist or, or anything like that. Fans are mad cuz he came out and blatantly lied. And said, yeah, I'm going to stay thing. here and I'm going to be here for a Celtics and my number's going up in the top. And then he goes in with buddy, buddy, Kevin Durant, and he goes to Brooklyn. That's why fans are mad. Yeah. And, also and he doesn't he understand kinda, that. He kind of dogged it a little bit. Part. And he also kind of dogged it a little bit. Yeah. Not a lot. He actually, I actually contend that he played his ass off in that series against Milwaukee. It's just they didn't all play together as well as they should. I think it was already, I think it was already yeah. broken. Yeah, but um, listen, I uh, I think uh, it's not just waving. It's gonna be interesting. Jenna. It's definitely gonna be interesting yeah. Friday night. It'll be, you know, and I hope I I wanted. I think the seeds could make a series out of this. I think they could push another. I think they could take a game, possibly two. And uh, nowhere in my in my mind could I ever think they could win this series because this is like the unwinnable series for them. But I did like what I saw in game one. I didn't watch all of game two because I had to do a bunch of stuff. But from what I did see, it was like, oh, where the hell is Jason Tatum? <laughs> Just kind of like. You ready for my next take? Oh, I'm sure it's going to be a, a ball breaker. He got poked in the eye. Like, I, yeah. I understand it hurts. I understand. But what did, what was he looking for? Like somebody to kiss it to make it better or something? Well, I, I Nick, I don't understand. And I actually, part of me likes that players aren't as crazy hateful against each other but yeah. i was just looking as a fan and this is this is kind of silly but i was looking for some blood i was looking for no or just or tristan thompson did, like, like, seen to take before. a bow you, you know, know lebron I, oh, what do you mean? james harden have gotten hit in the eye in my opinion from just from what i've seen a lot harder than that was i think this oh, was a get him out of the game early because yeah, uh, it You're wasn't probably right. going their way. Probably I, right. No, I, I don't I don't disagree. And that's so does, an easy my out. My question here is, does he deserve the criticism for it? Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course, it's the playoffs, man. I mean, even if you're not doing well, you have to – he's got to get his. He's got to try to do what he can. Listen, every game right now, everything right now is a national spotlight. And, like, you know what he could be doing? He could be playing his ass off, and people would be like, you know what? They didn't have Jalen Brown. Part of a champion. Took- yeah. Part of a champion. But I don't also, see it. Not, not just part of a talent. champion, but he, he's advertising for other players. He's advertising for other people like, you want to come play with me? 
You want to come play with this team? We don't have everything set up right now, but if you come here, we we need one or two pieces to get over that hump. But yeah, that, you're right. That gets, me, that gets me to my next point that I was going to ask you too, Phil. It's speaking of bringing in players and having them want to be here in Boston. I know we were just talking about the whole comments that Kyrie has said. Oh yeah. yeah. One of the things that I thought was even more damaging than what even Kyrie said was Kevin Durant backing him, saying that yeah. this is a big issue here in Boston, and it's probably why players don't want to come here. I thought that was the most damaging out of everything that came out of that statement that from Kyrie, because I think there is real truth to the matter here that players really don't want to come yeah. here to Boston because of our shady kind of history when it comes to acceptance. And I don't mean to be a Michael Felder wannabe or a Michael Hawley wannabe, but I thought that that show that they did the past couple nights was oh, outstanding. It's been, they've been great. It got, they've been great. It got my attention. It got me thinking, you know what? Maybe these guys have a point. Maybe maybe that is a, one of the reasons why the Celtics are struggling. And maybe it might be an internal struggle because it, 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 it's very damaging to your brand from what was said last night or the other night from Kyrie into yeah. Kevin Durant. That could have been the X factor and why Kevin Durant didn't want to come to Boston. You know, back when we were trying oh, to course. get Al Horford and Gordon Hayward and all, yeah. all these big time players. I, I would bet my house that that's probably the reason why he didn't want to come here. No, uh, Nick, 100%. And it sucks that that's been like here for a while. Barry Bonds, yeah. as much as whatever you feel about Barry Bonds, and I'm sure it's justified. But he had said back, I forget when, maybe when he was with the Pirates or even just when he first got to San Francisco, no one wants to play in Boston for, nope. that, for that reason. But, I mean, we've obviously there have been people that have gone back and forth, and money usually speaks a lot louder. Uh, but it depends. But it all depends. Like, And I don't want – listen, I do I think Boston or New England is getting better? Do I think the country is getting better? I mean, you could possibly say that. I, I don't know. I'm not you know, a person of color. I can't tell you that firsthand. But if statistically, possibly – uh, and I think having conversations like these lead to that sort of um, uh, evolve, uh, evolving into something a little better. But I also, honestly, uh, it's like, I just want to, I think the fans need to, like, it, it's all about, it's tough. It's tough. I still think there's so much of a divide and it's not even from sports. It's in this country where it's all great and wonderful. Black Lives Matter. Like, I get it. They do matter 100%. And I'll come out here and say that too. But you know what? Everybody matters. I don't care white. I don't care well, black. I, I think, but Asian, honestly, I think that's what whatever that is. it is. And I think that that's caused a lot of crap to go wrong in sports. Because if you look at ratings and everything too, because I, I look at kind of the underlying factor on that too. The NBA has lost millions well, of people. Well, actually, Mark Cuban, Mark Cuban actually was one of the guys who brought it up uh whether you like you know once again i'll, I'll disclaim anyone i bring up right. like, whether like you like him or him not. Yeah, he's got a he's yeah, exactly got a personality right he's got one of those personalities but he he's a smarter guy when it comes to his business ish uh and he says well you have to and someone brought that up to him and said well you had to look at the like the numbers that they use now and i would argue this for any tv show or anything like that those ratings are archaic and the people that are watching uh on their devices or through other apps or uh like experiencing uh the games in a different ways than just kind of cable or uh you know on abc or just on direct network television it's yeah. a lot different that it's been for the last decade let alone yeah you know 20 years you know five years ago let, let alone 10 or, or 15 or 20 years ago but that's and also you have a younger a lot of, like it's probably the second most popular sport in the u.s i would i would wager uh, easily because and also a young black audience and you know what not every you know uh, here's the thing for me i always speak for myself i can't afford to sit like five row five rows up at a basketball game um who and what do you, you and I, like, and I, I wouldn't and i'm not saying well, I, I mean maybe i could do it maybe once a month if, oh, I I, if you had it. yeah yeah if no, i had but, it I, I don't love see i don't love the product that's part yeah. of it i think it's created such a toxic kind of environment where you have to pick and choose which side if you don't side with lebron in his group then there's oh, a exactly. wall put up if you side with this particular person say it's uh uh 
personal. Oh, you mean uh, just like you sure. mean like player? You mean like players just kind of grouping together and just like creating their own super team or like a cult in a way? And it's like, yeah. I mean, I I think there's there are ups and downs to what they've done to the league, uh, and I I actually think there are a lot. Listen, the Eastern Conference is a powerhouse. I mean, and you remember, I mean, probably in your youth and even the last five ten years. The West was always a superior. The West league. always was. And yeah. even when LeBron left East the East. Yep. But you know what? The East is, I would argue, the East is the best it's, it's been since maybe Talent the 80s wise, or yeah, the 90s. You're probably right, Phil. Well, yep. you, you, have, uh, you have the Bucks. The Giannis, power you have, the Heat. Um, Bradley Beal. There's yeah, Bradley Dallas. Beal. You have, um, you know, the Knicks have some of their players oh, yeah. over there. Uh, Julius Randle. Thank you. Um, yep. And Derek Rose on the, but not just that, like these teams are pretty good. Like they're all pretty good. Like if you could, you have easily three to four people out of teams out of the East you could have. I mean, you could say that about the West, I'm sure, but I would say it comes down to LeBron and um, it comes down to the Lake, uh, maybe the two LA teams, but probably you're looking at maybe uh, a rematch of Denver and uh, LA, but you might be looking at Utah too. But I think, Listen, I could I could see the Bucks taking it. I could see Brooklyn is listen, Brooklyn is a powerhouse. And this is like think about it too. If you the it game reminds really, me of the Golden State. Oh know, yeah. With, with how much star power that they have. I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Brooklyn's gonna win this. It's not gonna be pretty, folks, because you know Kyrie's gonna go and win a championship with another group. And no, it's a, you know, honestly, it's a very it's, it's a gonna possibility. Happen. I, I think Philadelphia has a good chance of getting in their way. I think Embiid is someone who cannot be stopped. Uh, to me, if like there's no he one. stays healthy, that's his biggest. Well, that's that's the, isn't right that the thing? But I think I think for this playoffs, I think he'll be good to go. And I also think Doc has them playing real defense. And if anything, I think Doc's I think, a big reason why they've been so much better too. Yeah, man. They he's, listen he's, this past year. Prep. Oh, of course. He did all the credit. I would love Doc Rivers days. back for the Celtics. I'd love him. Yeah. I think that voice is so missed right now. And if I think the yeah. Celtics would could redo it, they probably would have kept Doc. Well, let's let's get to the seeds. Let's get to like the yeah. because you you kind of didn't. I mean, uh, throw at me what you have. I just Jason think, I think it's done. I think the series is oh. done. I know that. Oh you yeah, I think it's over. I, I want. I think you you want to give them a game or two of some sorts. I can't. I can't see them even even. Even being close in the next. Well, I mean, two. just a team as a team from here. Let's. I. I think we're both like, or all three of us. Like, yeah, they they've lost it already. But like, what do you think going forward with this team? I. I seriously think that they're going to try and work out something where Brad Stevens is no longer a part of this team next year. Yeah. Um, I think they're going to be working hard to bring somebody back from the 08 championship team, whether it's Garnett or Pierce or. Heck. Even even uh, what's his name was doing all the broadcasting. Who I think oh is Kendrick five, Perkins. Uh, even Kendrick Perk. Perkins with that fire, Perk. I think he'd be a tremendous coach. I I, I Perk, he just signed a big deal. Yeah, he just signed a big deal. He just with signed ESPN. a big deal, but you know, money talks yeah. sometimes. You know, if no, you give him something like that. I think that they are going to make some sort of a change with the, whether it's Jalen Brown being the core here or Tatum. I don't see both of them here next year. That I sucks because I really love both of them, and I think they could. It could be a really, it could be a really great one-two punch. Um, I don't think Kemba's here next year either. I think that they are really going to be. I think they're going to look very much different than they do right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I love Kemba as a. He seems like a really good guy, and he's he's a decent player when he's available to play. But you know what? They need they need a real uh, a guy who can be here every game, <laughs> or at least like. Be fairly healthy and also like a when it comes would be to great. good guy, that's Kemba. But yeah. when it comes to compete and when it comes to championship driven and desire to win and go through hurdles to get through things, I mean, let's face it, guys. The Bruins have I'm not the Bruins. Uh, the I was gonna the Bruins yeah. of 2011. The Celtics have not won a championship since 2008. We're almost going on uh what? Almost 14 years. 14, I mean, 13. It'll years be 13. Right this uh, June, but listen, Kemba, just, listen, I, you know, we've had better teams than what, what it shows from championship stuff, yeah. but they got to get back to how things used to be 70s, 80s, 60s, all that stuff. I know it's a different well, game, that, different breed. Well, but also think about like the, when 
a red had been like the head of player personnel or like i think he was the general manager or president in the 80s and, and red pretty much ran the league yeah so he was able to pretty much do whatever he wanted to to you know to a certain extent so we had kind of a monopoly monopoly on that for a while red R back for those who, who don't know yeah. one of the uh the original i don't know if he was the original coach but the most winningest one of the most winningest coaches in nba history yes. um but I, yeah, I think coaching and maybe even overhauling uh, Danny, but uh, Danny Ainge maybe getting out of there. But I, I don't. Listen, I think I would Danny Ainge is going to be moved to some. I don't think that they want to fire him because of the, his history with the team. But I think that they're going to push him out into another sort of role, whether he's player personnel or something there. Somebody else is going to be in the GM seat moving forward. I think that's yeah. I, think. I mean, I honestly, he's he's kind of he's done some fun stuff. He, he the Garnett thing he pulled off was because you know Kevin McHale was in the GM seat in Minnesota. Let's be honest, uh, and they didn't give up that much. They gave up some stuff, but and also what he did with Brooklyn was good. But he, he really didn't uh, didn't really get as much as he'd like. Jalen no. Brown, Jason Tatum are home runs, but if they split that up, it won't even matter. But if you can do something like get a Bradley Beal for like a Smart and Brown and a pick, uh, or even like Bradley Beal and some other, I would you know throw in a Smart Kemba and a pick for like a Bradley Beal if you can, and maybe even like one of the or Tristan Thompson. Who I mean, I don't know why he thinks he's offensively minded, but that's a whole other thing. I could go on for days about this, but yeah, overall I just think it'll be a different shaped team. Uh, we'll see how much the reception is. Uh, Tomorrow night when the Celtics will take on the Brooklyn Nets in game number three. So we shall see on that. Um, Before we wrap up on this uh, episode here of Face to Facts, we do want to do our Red Sox kind of recap on how things are looking for the team. And we're almost in June and the team still is chugging along and looking really solid again. I was not one of the people that stayed up till one o'clock in the morning, though, to watch the last victory. But they did get the job done against the Braves. Lots of still like on this team. They got some flaws and they got some holes, but we should all be very happy with the demotion today of Franchi Cordero, finally to the Woo Sox, finally goes down. What that means is um, they just they just put up Danny Santana, a player that was with the Texas Rangers in 2019, had a great year, got hurt last year in 2020. Had about 25 home runs, close to 100 RBI. I think it was close to 100 RBIs. Um, I think they're going to try and fill that void with him in that lineup and an everyday kind of basis. Um, the biggest thing with the Red Sox that takes some time to understand with all kind of the personnel that they have, there is so much versatility on this roster. They can have Mauro and Gonzalez pretty much play any position well. Kiki, Kiki Hernandez can play outfield, second base, shortstop. You can have Danny Santana playing first or infield or center field of some capacity. It's a really nice thing to see, but they still don't have that like stud that, you know, they got Bogart's great. Devers is awesome. JD Martinez is having a great year, but the bottom of the lineup has the, been the biggest issue so far with the team. So they're not getting anything out of Bobby Dahl back at first base. They're not really getting any left field production. Christian Vasquez has been in and out, not getting that much uh, production there. And uh, it's kind of been a juggernaut in right field too. You know, they're not really getting much, much love from any of their hitters and stuff there. Uh, pitching wise, the starters have been the starters who are the underdogs really have been great. Pavetta and um, what's his name? Perez, Martin Perez. Uh, Garrett Richards has been excellent. Avaldi and, and Eduardo Rodriguez have really not been as brilliant, you know, guys that you thought you could count on. The one I do want to say I'm very concerned with because I think they give him too much hype. And if you notice, I didn't say Erod because he doesn't deserve that title. He doesn't deserve it. It should be Eduardo Rodriguez. That's it. You want to be a rod? You need to be a stud. And he is not a stud. So I'm tired of them forcing him down our throats in a way where he's, he, he's getting looked at as the number one starter. He's not a number one. 
I'm sorry, he's not. So I want to see I want to see his compete level. I question his compete level. I think he's I think he's char, uh, charm and soft. It's my famous phrase I use on my Twitter. Charm and soft. The other one, it's she's just I I want to see more out of him. Middle relief is another thing that's a little bit of a concern outside of. Um, ottavino has been spotty, but he's been better of late. Barnes has been excellent at the back end. Amazing. I'm even saying that as, as the closer. He's not, he, it's a different person. I'm sorry. It's not the same Barnes. It's an imposter out in the mound. It's an imposter. It's not the same jerk that used to walk and give up all these home runs all the time. He's doing awesome. And I give what him are the Red Sox playing among us or something? Is that what you're saying? I, I don't know. It's a different, it's a different animal out there. Uh, so the trade deadline will be coming up. That will be in July. We've got about a month or so to go for that. But if this team is really continuing to, you know, project and to go uh, go the way that it's going right now, might want to invest and try and get in some uh, get some other players. The other news too is Chris Sale has been start has started to throw again after Tommy John surgery. They're expecting a late June to early July return for Chris Sale, which would be a huge boost to this. Oh well, that's a huge boost. Yeah, that'll be a huge boost. So everything's going great on that end for sale. And I'm really high on this guy, Jared Duran, uh, down with the Woo Sox. Um, he's for playing for Team USA right now, and he is just lighting the cover off the ball. He's their up-and-coming stud prospect. So it's just a matter of time before we see him at Fenway Park. Uh, that should be just about it outside of one thing that I do want to ask you guys opinion of for the Patriots before we wrap up. Uh, there is a rumor circulating that it is pretty much a done deal for Julio Jones to be coming to town here as a Patriot. Oh, really? A done deal. What do you think? Do we like that? I mean, uh, oh, go ahead, Tom. Um, I like it with I mean, a different quarterback. <laughs> I'll be yeah, honest. exactly. <laughs> that, that, Julio exactly. Jones said he wanted to come to the Patriots because he wanted to play with Cam Newton, and I asked myself why. Yeah, why well, play with the quarterback? Uh, I'm won't be able to get you the I ball. Can't figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's a little. Uh, I mean, hey, whatever works for you, bud. I don't know. I, I, and they're I like only Julio. they're willing to only ask for a second round pick too. Second round, second round Harris. Harris. Bye, bye. I'll do that move. What do Wait, you really? Is that what they were asking? Second round in Nikhil Harry, and maybe like a conditional seventh or eighth or something like that. And maybe like tickets to a show or something. That's like a slap in the face to Julio. A little bit. The land, and, you know, the land just doesn't want him. Well, they want to get rid of Matt Ryan too. Yeah, they do. So that's how things are shaping up for the Patriots. Oh, and remember, man. we have four quarterbacks right now on the roster. We oh, have – No, actually, Mac. Uh, Pretty much. Cam well, Newton, Mac, uh, Jared Mac Stidham, Ryan Hoyer, who's just there to just to be a, a mentor. He, let's well, be yeah, well, Gordon Felger and Mass, he's just there to help Matt Jones out. He's just a coach Ooh. for Mac Jones. You know, yeah, yeah exactly. What Tom was saying. So that's how things look like. They can't have him during OTAs, right? I still feel that something else is going to go down before the season hits. I'm not holding on. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we see something, something bigger and greater coming, like a Cam Newton excursion out to the uh, JRM uh, waste disposal company. <laughs> but that should do it here for another great episode of Face Facts. We covered all five, oh, all five, all four of our sports teams. Sorry, Revolution. Uh, here on Face. Oh wait, wow. One, before we before we go, uh, Adam Vinatieri, uh, another Patriot. Oh, yeah, he, he officially <laughs> retired. Yes. So if we give a twenty-four time, years, twenty-four, 24 years. years, and four championships, three with the greatest uh, kicker the ever. Time. Greatest <laughs> kicker ever. No question asked about it. You so, might have won it if you had him in 2007. Could have. Could have. But, uh, yeah. well, right. Could have won a lot of Or something yeah. like that for one of those. That's right. What was it? No, I remember Billy Cundiff was one, one of those playoff games where he missed it or something. Oh, like that, that was uh, the AFC Championship game for uh, Baltimore against us. That's right. And that it was like, it. yeah, it would it would have tied the game, but he, yeah. he shanked it and we like in between like the 10 or something. 
I will say that I do think that Patriots got lucky with how much production they got from Gostowski. You know, he was there for yeah. most picks on. He wasn't a slouch. He, was he wasn't coach. a slouch. He was pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. I had no nothing, nothing bad to say about Gostowski in the least bit. So, all right, we will see you again for our next episode. We will actually be talking more about how the Bruins are doing in round two. We're going to be talking about the Celtics golf game in the next uh, episode as well. And hopefully the Red Sox keep clicking. That's how the story goes. All right, for Nick Face, for Phil Healy and Tom Smith, we will see you again next time for another episode of Face the Facts. See you later.